Hearing on Mr. Backus's behalf, I would like to reserve three minutes for rebuttal, if I may. Three minutes is granted. The first issue I'd like to deal with here uh, concerns the trial court's failure to give a lesser included instruction on second degree murder. Uh, Mr. Backus was charged with first degree murder or in the alternative felony murder. Uh, the defense did request an instruction on second degree murder. Uh, that was denied um, and I think the, the district court based the denial on the fact that the evidence in support of the felony murder alternate was strong. Um, and that, that doctrine has now been uh, overruled and reversed by this court. And I, that occurred after I'd filed the brief, but in the brief I didn't really address that because the argument here is that uh, second degree murder is a, it's a textbook lesser included offense. Um, a premeditated first degree murder. Uh, the elements line up as precisely as any elements can except for the element of premeditation. Um, Excuse me, you're saying that the felony murder rule, special rule on lesser included simply didn't apply because there was a charge of premeditated first degree, is that your argument? Yes, and that, that premeditated first degree takes a separate track as lesser included offenses versus felony murder. Is, is there a factual scenario in your mind that would uh, ever preclude um, instructing on second degree intentional if, prema if first degree is? It seems to me it's, this case is pretty close to that. Well, but in your mind, you know, it, what, what it, scenario would, is there ever a scenario? I mean, is, this a, oh, is this an automatic in your mind? It's almost automatic. As I, as I was thinking about it, I think a poisoning, a poisoning of someone um, is, is about as close as you can get. And it's, that's probably even going to depend on what supports the, the claim. Um, but the statute, Another, the statute says if there's some evidence uh, that would reasonably support uh, a conviction on the lesser included, the court shall instruct. And it doesn't have an exception except if there's too much evidence of the charged crime. Well, yeah, that's, there's, a, there's plenty of evidence for premeditation here. But at what point, when, when you read the facts, at what point is the absence of premeditation legally precluded? Um, Mr. Backus... I, did, I didn't understand that. Uh, when you look at the facts, you, you try to say, okay, there's evidence of premeditation. Is there a point, as I read the facts in this case, where as a matter of law, premeditation had to have occurred? And I think, uh, you know, we were talking about the, the case where there would never be a second degree less. Well, I, 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 I think that's your position, basically. Well, it's it's, it's almost automatic. Another one is a contract killing, right? I, and, I mean, those are kind of the outer edge where if the facts support that contract killing, maybe you wouldn't have to give a less. And, and those are really the only extremes where I can explain that. Where to I can me. picture why, it. Why does that? Well, you know, maybe a murder that's arranged where the calls arranging it are recorded and there's a discussion, let's kill this person yeah, but, next week, well, and it well, happens. That's well, even if you have a confession, even if you have it on videotape, the, the court can't find, as a matter of law, the, that the defendant's guilty. The state still has to prove all of the right. elements, right. and premeditation is an element. Is. If you're saying you can find that as a matter of law, why can't you find that the killing was a, as a matter of law? Because I saw it on the tape. Well, I, I'm I, I mean, to once, once I'm, you I'm start trying to set some kind of theoretical limit where where second degree may not always be a lesser, and it's difficult to do. Those are the only two, and and they're able to be <coughs> shot down. And then we, so we've got those. Those abstract questions, but then we step in here, and it's much muddier here. I mean, Mr. Backus wasn't armed in this. You know, he walked in. The other guy had the gun. Um, the other guy fired the gun at the victim. 
Mr. Backus, I think, struck the victim a couple times. The Haberlein was the other guy who struck her a number of times when we review the facts. And actually, I think he testified, or a witness testified that Haberlein delivered the fatal blow. So we look at this at this transaction, I can't find a, I, I just can't find anything where I say as a matter of law, Bacchus had to have premeditated this. I think we don't reach that. That's, the, the jury makes that decision. But of, did, you, did you have an opportunity to read Plummer that came out last week that set forth the, the uh, uh, procedure for our review of requested instructions? If you didn't, it's that, not that we've, bell, so. we've made clear that it's subject to a harmless error analysis. Mm -hmm. And so why wouldn't, if the evidence is so, if there's plenty of evidence of premeditation, then why wouldn't that render it harmless, even if the it was error not to give it? Do you understand what I'm asking well, you? Well, I do understand it. I mean, at uh, some point, you you were trying to set up a scenario where the evidence was so overwhelming that you wouldn't be required to give second. But if there is such a scenario, that would certainly be subject to a harmless error analysis, wouldn't it? If, if no jury would have gone for the lesser charge. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of harmless error, as you might guess. It's, juries do things that everybody in the courthouse didn't expect. That's why we have juries. I mean, that's, that's the fundamental right, is juries make these decisions. Uh, judges should not be making decisions on what is likely to happen, what a likely verdict would be by a jury. But isn't and, that what the statute requires us to do? I'm looking at 22-34-14-3, the words reasonably convict. What, what would that mean to you if not that this court or the trial court would act as a gatekeeper and say there just is not enough evidence here that would support a jury's verdict for this lesser included well, instruction, therefore I'm not going to give it. One problem is when you're saying there's not evidence to support it, actually the question is the question is the whether we reasonably prove. convict reasonably convict so it doesn't say if there's a whisker of evidence you automatically instruct for some reason the legislature talked about reasonably convict so maybe my question to you is what does that mean to you well you've got it in aggravated battery cases a through and through wound may preclude an instruction on that lesser but here we've got a state of mind as the element premeditation as distinct from intent. There is a fine line between those two somewhere that's difficult to define. And the real question is, if we've got these <clears throat> elements, if a juror has a reasonable doubt about the existence of one of those elements, should that jury not get the opportunity to consider a lesser included that does not include that mental element? Can we factor in at that point, uh, the jury's generally instructed that they're to consider the higher offenses first. And when we have, as we do here, strong evidence of premeditation, can we factor that in when we're doing the harmless error analysis, that at least at this stage, that they were told to consider it first, there was strong evidence of it, they did consider it first, they never would have made it down to the second instruction does that make well, make sense but in a sense then <clears throat> they did what that, they were told that ends lesser included as right. an error well. when when there's a conviction of the greater yep. um i mean that's it'd be pretty black and white i guess it's over at that point and th i mean the, the the thing that strikes me here is if there's strong evidence is what i'm there saying is. And, yeah maybe i got off to the wrong start saying there's <laughs> strong evidence here but there is Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's evidence for a jury to find premeditation when you look at the transaction. But the real question is, is that a legal necessity? I mean, is there some point when you go through the facts where, as a matter of law, you can say Mr. Backus in premeditated, he thought it over beforehand that this victim would die? And as you look at it, you simply don't reach that conclusion that the way that you might with a poisoning or a contract killing uh, um, so if it is a poisoning or a contract killing there would be no 
right to a lesser well, included we'll get, instruction. Let what me I'm finish saying, my question, and then you'll get a chance to answer, if I may. All right? Agreeable? Yes. Okay. So if it's a poisoning or a contract killing, there's no right to a lesser included. But short of that, anything else would go to the jury, because in your mind, anything else would meet the statutory requirement of the evidence would reasonably justify a jury's conviction of, in this case, the second degree murder charge. That's my question. And it's, it's a lot for me to answer. Um, because my example of the contract killing, I'm, I'm trying to create an abstract thing where there may be, depending on the evidence, phone calls, let's kill this guy next week. Yes, let's do it. Those two converse and set it up and it happens. That's, to me, that's a fairly absurd outer limit, but I'm trying to think of something that may preclude uh, the giving of a second degree murder. What about where they don't, where, and we have these cases where they specifically request that no instruction be given even though the judge is, is uh, willing to give one, and we have those cases up here where they then come up and say the judge should have given well, over, I've over had my some objection. Of those. I've had some of those. Right. That's kind of muddy because it turns on what the district court judge decides to do. So you're saying um, even when it's invited error and the defendant says, my theory of defense is all or none, I don't want a lesser instruction, even then we should, we should reverse if there was some evidence upon which a well, reasonable I, jury could have convicted? I've argued that. I, it, that argument did not succeed. Um, but the, the key thing here is the absence of a mental state element. This is not an aggravated battery where the bullet went through the person's arm as a simple matter of fact. And that may, as this court's held, that can preclude some lesser included instructions. Uh, this is different because the, the mental state, the element of premeditation is the key between those two crimes. And can I take you quickly to the, the newly discovered evidence? I, I guess I don't understand. The, the argument is, hey, the father just recalled that son was at his house. Wouldn't the son have known he was at the house? I mean, the well, father recalled that the son was at the house, and, and so it was an alibi, but, but at trial the son wouldn't have known he had the alibi? I mean, I don't understand how that's newly discovered. Well, I don't. It, it's newly discovered in the sense that the father hadn't come forward with any of this. And I don't know what, what Mr. Backus may have but told the, his attorney. But the alibi about. wasn't newly discovered. I mean, he, he, if he wasn't at the crime scene and he was home putting on Christmas decorations, like Father says now, why wouldn't he have known that at trial? He knew he had an alibi. Maybe he didn't know he have a, had a witness, but, well, but that, certainly he knew he had the alibi. That's true, and that can change the decision of whether somebody testifies or puts their alibi on when it's just them. And, and real quickly, what's the what's the standard, our standard of, of review on your uh, mentally retarded issue? Well, uh, it's it's a legal sufficient standard, which I think is de novo. There's not. But, but it, it, if, if it's competency to stand trial, we give deference and we, we use an abuse of discretion. Because if, if there's a, a, that statute deals with, if, if there's reason to believe that defendant may not be competent to stand trial, then the court can order the hearing and order the evaluation. And we review that on a, abuse of discretion. And I'm having trouble distinguishing this scenario from that scenario, it looks exactly the same. If there's sufficient uh, belief that there's mental retardation, then you order the evaluations, etc. cetera. Um, and why wouldn't it be treated exactly the same? Well, I think there's, a, there's some quantum of evidence that would compel a court to grant that request. And I think whether that quantum of evidence exists is a legal question. I mean, uh, you know, uh, appellate courts will make that determination of whether the evidence is sufficient to support a crime. A can uh, that's, be a probable cause type of assessment? Is that what you're saying? Yes. There, I mean, there are legal decisions that an appellate court makes de novo when facts are plugged into a legal standard. Um, this is this was not 
to my view, a discretionary decision that a court makes, as it would if, if, if the court had reached the second part of this question, which is determining whether Mr. Backus was actually mentally retarded. Um, so I think that's where the abuse of discretion, at least on a facts standard, would exist. Um, but here we have a, a quantity of evidence that Mr. Backus's counsel presented to the trial court um, to show that sufficient reason to believe he was retarded existed. Um, and I think that calls for a de novo, a straight legal standard of whether those facts were sufficient to establish uh, that issue, whether there was sufficient reason to believe he was mentally retarded. Um, I'm Counsel, out of time. you're out of time. Would you like 30 seconds to wrap up? Um, yes, I would. And we've touched on the most important issues for me. I know that I briefed some others. I'll stand on those. But these were the, the three key issues that I wish to raise. Um, the premeditation is, to my mind, the, the premier issue. We've got a, a mental state. Um, that a jury may not have found existed. And I believe the district court should have instructed on the second degree uh, murder as a lesser included. Thank, Thank you. you, counsel. May it please the court. Cheryl Lidke on behalf of the state. If the defendant is uh, conceding that a, a poisoning might be a case of uh, where premeditation is a matter of law, then I would submit to this court that this case was no less than uh, like a poisoning case. Let's start, was, let's start with what the, the trial court did. The trial court denied the request for second degree based on the felony murder uh, uh, rule at that time that said if the underlying felony uh, uh, was strong, you didn't give the instruction. You would agree That's that correct. that was the in incorrect analysis where the, one of the charges was premeditated. You would agree with that? I would agree with that. And so then we're under the statute that says if there's some evidence mm -hmm. or, uh, that would su uh, reasonably support a conviction for the lesser, that the court gives it. I would agree with that as and well. And that statute doesn't have an exception if, except where there's a whole bunch of evidence supporting the charge crime. It says you give the charge crime and the lessers if there's some evidence of the lesser. So you would agree that that focuses us on the evidence to support the lesser rather than the charge crime. I would not agree with that. I would argue that the exception that you've just stated applies to this case, that there was a whole lot of evidence that supports just the first degree uh, How do we get there, though, in the statute? Do, you, do we read that uh, exception into the statute? Well, I think there was no likelihood that there was any evidence that supported a jury reasonably convicting of second-degree murder. Okay. The Sandberg case says that you were well within your rights to have charged this as second-degree intentional murder. Correct? You could have charged it that way. You didn't have to go with premeditated. Well, I, I suppose that's a correct And if statement. you had done that and there had been a conviction and you were standing up here uh, and Mr. Barty was saying there was insufficient evidence to support that conviction, what would you say? Was there sufficient evidence to support that conviction? There would have been. What, but what you're really saying is there was a whole bunch of evidence that would support a higher crime. And nothing less than that. But that isn't, second degree does not have the negative of no premeditation. In other words, the elements of second degree are exactly the same as first degree, except first degree has premeditation. Second degree doesn't say an absence of premeditation. So when you commit first degree, by necessity, you've proved second degree intentional, haven't you? I, I think it's possible that under certain circumstances that you have by necessity proven second degree as well. But I think there are other cases no, no, where... No, no, What circumstance would you not? The elements, if you list the elements... Correct. They're exactly the same elements until you get to premeditation is the only different one. I agree, but that's not the analysis. The analysis is, is there sufficient evidence that a jury could have reasonably convicted of the lesser included crime and I think the answer is no in certain it, cases. It's a difference between could have and would have. 
you're saying that no reasonable jury would have selected the lesser that's not saying that a reasonable jury could have could not have because they could have and they would have been legal if it if the instruction had been given and that this jury had chosen second degree that conviction would stand i agree and so you what you're saying is we can't believe that any jury would opt for a second degree when they had a choice of first degree but that's not our choice i don't i don't it's think, a jury question isn't it i don't think that the test for the lower court is um, if there if the elements have been proven does it have to be given as a lesser included i think the test for them is in a case like this in particular whether there is so much evidence of the higher crime that no reasonable jury could uh, convict on the l lesser included crime and so th by doing that in effect the trial court is finding premeditation as, as a, matter, a matter of law absolutely and if they can find if the court can find that element why can't they find all of the elements and say boy i've looked at this and i think there is overwhelming evidence of an act that, of killing and so all of the elements there's overwhelming evidence of all the elements so we'll just find uh, guilt as a matter of law well, the jury is given a choice of finding not guilty as well. Well, well but which, which elements does a court get to find? Well, I, I don't think it's a matter of the, the lower court making a specific finding that these have been proven. It's a matter of, them, of, of the district court saying there's overwhelming evidence that a jury could find him guilty of that and that they could never convict of the lesser included crime. But who's the trial judge to make that call? Well, it's a jury question. They get to choose premeditation or not. Well, I think that's our whole back, system. The jury decides that, not the judge. Well, I think then you get back to Justice Ness, Justice Ness's comment about whether a jury uh, could reasonably convict of them, and doesn't that require some sort of exercise no, of discretion on behalf that, of the court? That's that's only makes sense if you view it as whether a reasonable jury would have selected first degree over second degree, not whether they could. Legally, they could have. You've already admitted that if this had been given as a lesser and they had convicted of second, that that conviction would stand and it wouldn't be overturned on appeal. I agree. So they could have convicted. Whether there, there they would was... have or not may be an issue for it, a harmless error analysis. An intentional murder was definitely proven, but okay. absolutely more than just an intentional murder was proven, and so that nobody could conclude that just an intentional murder was committed. Counsel, uh, what it, you've been a prosecutor for a number of years, as yes. I recall. You've been here a number of times. Have you ever been on the receiving end of a motion for a judgment of acquittal? Yes. And, and has the defendant ever been successful? Uh, no, not in the 23 years that I've been prosecuting, and, at least in my cases. And now, it, in the state of Kansas, I'm sure they have been, but not in my cases. I haven't seen that. Basically, what is the judge being asked to do when a defendant makes such a motion? Um, to, I guess, second guess the verdict of the jury. Depends on when it, the motion comes. If, if Are you talking if about after the verdict has come in or no, prior before. to? A, a motion that would be filed to say there is no point in this going to a jury. Right. They're assessing the evidence. They're giving quality uh, to the evidence at that point in time. Is that your question? Th that's my question. Okay. Do you know what the standard is that the judge is being asked to uh, measure the motion against? I'm sorry, I don't. I'm, uh, Wouldn't that be a could? The judge has to determine whether a rational jury could convict given the evidence before it. But the judge does not assess whether they will do it, right? That's why it's not taken away from the jury. It's submitted to the jury, right? If the judge could decide would, then why wouldn't you just take it away from the jury at that point and say, I'm not only not going to quit, I'm going to convict? 
Justice Johnson, all, all I can say is that relying upon cases that this court has decided, uh, there are times when this court has decided uh, that the evidence is so overwhelming of the higher crime that the lesser included instruction does not need to be given. Even the scape case that was relied upon heavily by the defendant in his brief uh, seems to indicate that where the, the circumstances of the killing, there is evidence that is overwhelming of that, that the, his state of mind, there is evidence that is overwhelming of that, that as a matter of law, the court can find that premeditation has been established. Your, uh, if we just accept under the analysis that I think Justice Johnson is talking about, which is our cases from last Friday, that the third step of this analysis, that the this district court erred here and should have given the lesser included instruction uh, under the standard, under the statutory standard, and then we go to a harmless error analysis, do you think that we, at this point, at, at this level, should weigh and balance the evidence of the uh, the overwhelming evidence of premeditation uh, at this stage and say, well, yes, it should have been given, but yes, okay. absolutely. I'm, I'm so not regardless familiar. of whether we decide that the instruction should or shouldn't been given, we would still weigh and balance at that force. If you're going to use a harmless error analysis, I would hope that you would find in favor of the state on that because of the overwhelming nature of the the evidence uh, of premeditation and that a jury was given the instruction um, that they found beyond a reasonable doubt that premeditation existed, I think speaks for itself, um, that they would have concluded that. But, but that's not the test. I mean, we get give lessers so the jury can have a choice. Without the second, they were faced with uh, uh, the singular choice of either find premeditation or let this killer go. Well, uh, if they're given a second degree, then they they have the option of determining um, if they believe that this was an intentional killing, but don't believe it was uh, thought over beforehand. Then that gives them that choice. Well, I would disagree with you that we give lessers just so that juries can have a choice. Uh, we have to guide the juries in what is legally correct. And if you just give them choices that are not legally correct choices, then how has justice been served? And so we have judges who create these instructions to give them guidance on how to apply the facts in the case. Uh, the judges make the decision on the law and what lesser included they should be making their choices from. So I don't think that just because it factually could be a lesser included that we give them that choice if it doesn't fit legally. It doesn't fit legally here because of the overwhelming evidence of premeditation. Right. And I want to remind the court that the defense in this case was a general denial. There was no evidence put on by them. This was purely the state's case, and all of the state's evidence pointed to premeditation, nothing less than premeditation. Can I move you to the standard of review on the um, mentally retarded issue? Yes. Uh, I argued in my brief that their standard is not correct. This is not a de novo uh, review. Uh, we would argue that abuse of discretion is the correct standard, and that's because we, we too, have compared it to the competency statute in which this court has already decided uh, that will be that those decisions will be reviewed under an abuse of discretion sta standard. Ms. Lipke, can yes. I just ask you a, a record question real quick? Sure. Um, the, the hearing that was held on this issue, it was non-evidentiary hearing? It was just arguments by counsel? or. Well, there was an opportunity to present evidence, and I think what the judge said at the end of the hearing was, if you get me some school records, I'll take a look at that and consider that before I make my ruling. Some school records were submitted. Okay. Uh, so there, there was an opportunity to present evidence. One of the things I point out in my brief, though, is that there was no expert that was presented by the defendant. Um, and um, really no evidence to support that he was mentally retarded. But that opportunity existed for the defendant. Thank you. Yes. Um, you know, if you look at the statute that uh, talks about the mental retardation finding when someone is asking for the hard 50, we believe it leaves the determination of whether there is sufficient evidence of being mentally retarded completely up to the court. 
And so, Justice Johnson, that's why we believe that the standard should be abuse of discretion. In this case, there was no abuse of that discretion. Uh, as I pointed out, there was absolutely no evidence that he was mentally retarded. His father testified that he'd never been, uh, or stated that he'd never been diagnosed with mental retardation. Uh, the school records that were later submitted never established that he was. Um, no expert was presented. And then the defendant himself, I believe it was at the sentencing, uh, even said, I'm not retarded. I'm not mentally retarded, Your Honor. Uh, so if you look at this, even with a de novo standard of review, uh, we would say that the uh, lower court was correct in finding that mental retardation had not been established. Um, I see I'm almost out of time, so I'm going to rest on that. That my really break. wasn't the determination, was it? it? Whether mental retardation was established, wasn't it? The gatekeeping stage where the court had to decide whether to get an evaluation? Correct. So there wasn't a determination. We're one step earlier. Was there sufficient to give the court sufficient evidence to give the court reason to believe that uh, the court should order testing. And so that's that's a little earlier stage. You, the but defendant didn't need to prove mental retardation at that point, correct? Correct, but he needed to give the court some sort of indication that that would be the case. A, a reason to believe. And, and that simply wasn't proven. Counsel, I see you're out of time. Do we have any further questions of counsel? Thank you. Thank you. We reserve three minutes for rebuttal. Thank you. Uh, on the, the mental retardation issue, I think Mr. Bacchus's father testified, um, and he testified that uh, Mr. Bacchus had been tested at school. His IQ tested around 70, um, to his knowledge, which I think is kind of the cutoff for mental retardation um, for IQ scores. There was also some documentation presented which is, it's kind of scattershot when you look at it. It's a collection of uh, school records and some evaluations that have been done on Mr. Backus. Um, a 2003 summary described him as borderline, um, which to me is borderline between retarded and not. Um, was that borderline special ed? I, I seem to recall that, that there was some struggle between parent and school as to whether this gentleman qualified for special education i i don't remember that um and there, there were a number um, of school evaluations and uh, wexler evaluations one also found that he was not but said that this is suspect there's this huge disparity between verbal and performance score which tends to undermine that result so i i think the question is whether there was sufficient reason to justify holding a hearing. And I think the evidence that was adduced by Mr. Bacchus's father and by the documents met that standard, and the court should have held an actual hearing, which would have um, included testimony from experts and evaluations, hopefully a more current evaluation. Um, on the issue of, of the second-degree murder, uh, I'm troubled by the fact that the state's arguing that the, the strength of element, the strength of evidence in support of premeditation would preclude a jury from not finding that element um, in a case like this, which it was a beating death um, in which Mr. Bacchus did land some blows, but he... Well, it, it was more than that. Well, it was. It was, he was more than involved. that, especially with Mr. Bacchus. I mean, you, you, it, he, he uh, engaged in the, in the beating, and then she was shot, opened the safe, escaped. Yes. He was the one that got her, yes. brought her back in, beaten some more, and then shot. It's, it's more than just... Uh, a, a beating, a bar fight kind of. Well, and I was. I think I was talking about the the actual mechanism of the death. I think there was a blow, uh, a physical blow that was delivered, that I think was shown to be fatal, and uh, Mr. Backus did not deliver that blow. And it, the question becomes: At what point 
when you've got two people doing this, at what point, as, as a matter of law, has premeditation been proved um, to the exclusion of no premeditation for Mr. Bacchus? That's a troubling concept. Are, are trial me. judges supposed to engage in, well, what could this be? I mean, well, I, what, 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 what's the I path? I think so. I, we've got even, even though I, even though I, the facts don't necessarily support it. Just well, what could well, this be? What could but, be, have been in his mind? But we're not. Yeah, but we're not even quite to what do the facts support? It's do the facts preclude one of those elements not being proved? You know, and, and to kind of go back to the aggravated battery deal, you've got some situations an act is going to be. A great bodily harm, aggravated battery. I mean, you, it's possible to define that with a specific type of wound. Um, here we're talking about somebody's mental decision, a premeditation to kill someone, as distinct from intent. And, you know, Jones was cited by the state, but it talks about um, whether the victim was killed with premeditation or simply with intent, however prolonged. So we've got intent, we've got premeditation, we've also got prolonged intent. And at what point do you tell a citizen that the jury will not make that decision, that distinction between prolonged intent and premeditation? Uh, a judge will do that and appellate court judges will do that. I, I think that takes the question away from the jury, which... Uh, violated Mr. Backus's right to have the jury decide that element. Mr. Barty, what was the case you gave us on the prolonged intent? Uh, state versus Jones. Do you which know I the think year was, of that decision? I don't. It was cited by the state. It's. I think it was relied on in SCAFE. Okay. 2005. Okay, thanks. That's all I have. Thank you. Assume we have no further questions at council. Uh, that